Let's, let me get your thoughts on the markets close today. We, we've saw, seen the markets recovery into a third day now, um, even though last week it was down 1.6%. Um, but it seems lacking conviction because we did see today yeah. that volumes were down significantly. That is true, uh, Wally. Uh, thanks for inviting me on the program, first of all. Uh, with respect to the market, uh, we'll continue to see you know, this kind of cycles, ups and downs. And it's largely because, we, like you said, we, have, we don't have a conviction. And I think to a large extent it reflects uh, the lack of credibility we have uh, for regulators. Uh, there's very, very little, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, confidence in the system, the regulatory system, I'll say, the CBN, mm -hmm. uh, the SEC, and also probably the government. You know, I think a lot of investors have been quite disappointed by, you know, the whole process of recapitalizing the banks. It's been, you know, delayed longer than necessary. and. Um, I think even at this point, you could argue that maybe there isn't even a need for, you know, the AMCON again, you know, but regardless, as the AMCON has been set up to do, you know, what it's meant to do, which is recapitalizing the banks, we need to see some execution on that front. And I think that that is what uh, investors, in particular the local institutional funds, are waiting for. So uh, it is true that they have announced, they have considered a board, but we need to see action. Mm. So I, I think not until we see some action from AMCON, that will lead to some sort of M&A. Uh, I know it's already almost the end of the year. We still expect to have at least one or two M&As before the end of this year. If that happens, you know, it could it could it could push the market uh, before the close of the year. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, I think we could continue to see the market uh, play out this way. You know, ups and downs, or probably even close lower uh, as as you know, portfolio managers. Uh, take some money off the table. And we would probably get into that in another discussion, but let's focus now on the consumer market and, you know, the point that uh, Lorato just made about 150 million consumers. Is it a myth or is it really, does that really reflect this market being that market that many investors, consumer-focused um, companies are looking to come into? It is. Uh, it is a market. Uh, Nigeria is uh, the seventh largest uh, country in the world by population. So uh, without a doubt, we'll be also the largest consumers, one of the largest consumers in the world, uh, be it processed food, dry food, uh, you know, uh, non-durable uh, durable goods, and also non-durable goods as well. So uh, it is real, only you obviously don't see it on High Street. It, is, it happens largely on Main Street. So if you go into uh, the Lagos areas, you know, uh, uh, you know, Lagos Island, that's where you see that mass of population of consumers, you know, buying goods uh, either substandard or cheap, cheap products. But I think that there is, you know, that massive population out there. It's the reason why Nigeria is uh, today one of the largest importers of cement. Uh, it is also one of the largest uh, importers of rice and also other commodities as well. But you know, one of the issues that many um, should I say critics of that um, assessment of Nigeria as being a huge consumer market is the level of poverty. And you know, when you look at the demographics, you look at the level of poverty, the fact that so many people live under um, a dollar a day, you know, one begins to think: Is the market really that deep? It is a concern, but I think we've made tremendous progress over the last decade. Uh, per capita uh, income was less than uh, about three hundred dollars a year. Sorry, a year about a decade ago, but now we're up to about 1,300. So it's a very, very big progress, and I think you've seen that on the streets as well. Uh, the government and you know some of the private institutions out there have empowered uh, consumers. So I think consumption generally has really picked up significantly. Mm -hmm. If you look at the disposable income of uh, every consumer out there or, or uh, individual, uh, the bulk of it is largely uh, consumption of food. That represents anywhere between uh, 35 percent to 40 percent of total disposable income. And uh, that has obviously picked up, if you look at how much value uh, that represents, it has picked up over uh, about roughly five, seven percent a year. So that gives you a sense of, uh, you know, the, the growth in consumption in that area. More so, if you look at the activities of the consumer companies, within our universe of about 11 consumer companies, they have invested about roughly $1.5 billion over the last three years building capacity, expanding capacity. That tells you how optimistic they are about uh, the Nigerian consumer market, uh, mm -hmm. the biggest indicator of anything happening within the consumer space. So uh, it is in the meat wallet. I think that uh, there is serious consumption going on and it will only increase now that we're looking to, to push our economy further. The government is looking to make Nigeria one of the largest uh, top 20 economies by 2020. I think uh, with uh, the ambition to to get per capita income to about $4,000 uh, 
uh, per person, which represents over 100% uh, mm -hmm. increase in, in per capita income. Uh, naturally, you see also consumption of, of uh, durable and non-durable goods also increase quite uh, tremendously. Mm. And then finally, can we just look at one of those companies which you just mentioned has made tremendous investments in Nigeria, Guinness. We saw Q, um, Q1 numbers out last week. What were general impressions? We've seen turnover and profits come up significantly. Guinness, uh, as with uh, the other major brewer, Nigerian breweries, has done pretty well on the volume side. Uh, those volume numbers uh, were up about 18% on the first quarter, no and first quarter uh, results. And it's p primarily reflective of the demographics, Nigerian demographics. As I mentioned to you, about 70% of the Nigerian population are people within the age of, of, of 1 to about uh, 40. Now, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the demographics within the space of people consuming beer, 19 years old to about 40 years old, they represent over slightly above 50% of the population. So the demographics supporting the growth in, in beer volumes uh, is quite strong and that's why the you know I think one of the keys to uh, doing well within the beer business is supporting your brand and that's why the Guinness and Nigerian breweries have done very well in terms of uh, you know spending on marketing they spend you know in excess of uh, you know a hundred million dollars every year you know supporting their brands and so we expect this company is going to do well on the back of that demographics I think that the macroeconomic uh, uh, you know platform as well as we continue to improve on Capital GDP will also that that would also support uh, the, this company as so well. So Guinness is a buy for you uh, at the current levels. We Very quickly, we, we, we currently we currently have it as a hold, but we think that there are great opportunities, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for for you know people who buy that stuff.